Now let's finally look at a quantum algorithm, Deutsch's algorithm. But first, let's look at the problem it solves and how we would solve that problem with a classical computer. Say we have a function f that takes in a bit and returns a bit. We don't know what the function does. All we can do is send in a bit and read the output bit. It is like a black box. Our task is to find out whether the function f is constant or balanced. If a function is constant, then it returns the same bit no matter the input. Here are the two constant functions that can act on one bit. Constant 1, which always returns 1, and constant 0, which always returns 0. Balanced functions, on the other hand, return 0 for half the inputs and 1 for the other half of the inputs. Here are the two balanced functions that can act on one bit. Identity, which returns the input, and the NOT gate, which we saw before, which flips the bit. As you can see, both these operations return 0 for one input and 1 for the other input. For this problem, we don't care if the function is a NOT gate or a constant 0. We only care if it is constant or balanced. If we wanted to find out if f is constant or balanced on a classical computer, we would first need to input 0 and then input 1 to see if we get the same or different values. If f of 0 equals f of 1, then we know that the function is constant. And if f of 0 does not equal f of 1, then the function is balanced. So we need to query the function twice, once with 0 as the input and once with 1 as the input. With quantum computers and Deutsch's algorithm, however, we only need one query of the function to find out if the function is constant or balanced. Here is the circuit for the algorithm. The U of f represents the function f. At psi sub 0, the qubits are in the state 0, 0. Then at psi sub 1, the qubits are in the state 0, 1. At psi sub 2, we apply a Hadamard to each of the qubits leaving us with the state plus minus. Let's expand the plus state and distribute the minus state into the equation. Now at psi sub 3, we apply the unitary matrix uf acting as the function to the state. Since all quantum operations are linear, uf gets distributed into the state and acts on each of the superposition states individually. If we look at each of the superposition states, they are in the phase oracle form. So applying u of f to the first state becomes negative 1 to the power of f of 0, 0 minus, and the second state becomes negative 1 to the power of f of 1, 1 minus. The minus qubit is not needed for the rest of the algorithm, so we will omit it to clean up the equation. Now let's consider two different scenarios. If f of 0 equals f of 1, then the state becomes 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, if f of 0 and f of 1 equals 0, or 1 over root 2, negative 0, minus 1, if f of 0 and f of 1 equal 1. With this, we can factor out a global phase of negative 1, leaving us with 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1. Therefore, if f of 0 equals f of 1, the state becomes 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, or the plus state. Now let's look at if f of 0 does not equal f of 1. So if f0 equals 0 and f1 equals 1, the state becomes 1 over root 2, 0 minus 1. If f of 0 equals 1 and f of 1 equals 0, then the state becomes 1 over root 2 minus 0 plus 1. With this, we can factor out a global phase of negative 1, leaving us with the minus state. So overall, if f of 0 equals f of 1, the state becomes the plus state, and if f of 0 does not equal f of 1, the state becomes the minus state. See if you can finish the rest of the algorithm off yourself. Now at psi sub 4, we apply a Hadamard to the qubit. In the case where f of 0 equals f of 1, this transforms the state into 0, and in the case where f of 0 does not equal f of 1, the state becomes 1. Now, all that's left to do is measure the qubit. Looking at our equations, if we measure as 0, then the function is constant, since f of 0 equals f of 1. And if we measure 1, 
then the function is balanced, since f of 0 does not equal f of 1. As you can see, what took a classical computer two queries of the function was done with one query of the function on a quantum computer. In the next lesson, we will look at the deutsch joser algorithm, which considers itself with the same problem of Deutsch's algorithm of finding out if a function is constant or balanced. But instead of having a function that only inputs one bit, the algorithm is a general case that accepts any number of bits as input 